So good evening to one and all. Oh, first of all, I thank my postdoc mentor, Dr. D. Inbagandan sir, for giving me this great opportunity. Uh, so as he said, uh, my postdoctoral works is on a cup of a seaweed, in particular, ISIS disease of a particular disease in this algae, uh, brown algae, red algae. So my postdoc Uh, after the disease. Uh, so it has been before uh, there are some works which are done in normal seaweeds, but after disease, the uh, disease has occurred in the red algae, uh, so sorry, the red brown algae. So what are the genes that have been uh, down regulated or upper regulated? So these studies are also done through transcriptomics. And in metagenomic studies, we have st uh, studied about the microbiome, what are the microorganisms uh, are, uh, involved or how we collected. So in detail today, today's uh, presentation, I'll be dealing on uh, how we have been involved in uh, collecting the samples and what are the characteristics apart from this also. So basically I will be touching that. Then I will be going for the metagenomics and transcriptome analysis. So hope my uh, screen is visible. So it's screen is visible, right, sir? My screen is, it is visible. visible. It is okay. visible. Yeah. Okay, sir. So topics to be presented is today by uh, uh, the collection of sample gram staining. So I'm not going to in detail much about it. So just I'll show the photographs all. So histopathology studies on uh, disease disease and his isolation of carazin degrading bacteria and characterization of that uh, bacteria like UV uh, carazinin, UV visible spectral analysis, FTR, NMR, HPLC, GCMS. And uh, next at the last, we'll be seeing microbiome and transcriptome analysis. So microbiome is nothing but the sequencing of uh, uh, microorganisms which are involved in the microbiome. Micro means microorganisms, bio means diversity, group of organisms which involves in uh, formation of this disease for this particular algae. So it's a it's a se sequencing study on thickness RNA, especially in V3, V4 region. So what are the microbes that are involved? Majority in order level and genus level. Then at the last transcriptome analysis, nothing but the gene expression analysis of the disease disease. So this is the highlight of this presentation today. So we'll go into one by one. So Kappafer salvinase, as everyone knows, it's a macroalgae which produces a strong and rigid gel-like substance called Kappacaragenin. As this, everyone knows this uh, Kappacaragenin, uh, it's a, uh, we have a lot of forms, Kappa, Iota, Ga, we have two, three, four more forms, uh, isoforms like Caragenins. In that, this Kappacaragenin plays a major role and we everyone knows that this Caragenin has an uh, antiviral activity also. And this carazinin only makes the uh, responsible for the algae to have uh, look uh, brown color. So this in Tamil we used to, in Tamil in another word, this uh, algae is also called as a Pepsi Posse, you know that. So the main uh, natural source for producing this Pepsi, uh, cool drinks and Coca-Cola, these companies uh, take carazinin from this particular algae, brown algae. And they extract this carazin compound, they add as a natural flavor to the soft uh, this uh, soft drinks. And this is why these drinks look uh, like brown color. So this brown color is due to the uh, presence of this kappa carazin. So this is an important uh, feed source uh, for uh, food, especially in the food industries, especially in this uh, soft drinks production. So these Pepsi people uh, uh, are being uh, uh, giving economically funding the fishermen's to culture near the Pamban uh, Mandavam area. So we collected the samples from that area and we have undergone uh, studies with uh, ISIS disease sample especially. So the development of ISIS disease in Kappa Pagas Alvarez is seaweed as considerable consequence for carazin business. So histolog uh, histological studies like section of ISIS disease tissue showed variations in the structure of polysaccharides, which also confirms the assertion of pathogens in, uh, in the seaweed. And this effect of ISIS disease on carazin quality in relation to the healthy seaweeds, it's examined completely by uh, different analytical methods like UV spec, FTAR, NMR, HPLC, GCMS. We, uh, I'll show you all the results, how we got. Then uh, analysis of carazinin uh, uh, degradation was done based on high throughput elimina sequencing of the V3, V4 region of fishness RNA gene. Uh, 
since the assessment of microbiome plays a major role in assessing the health of the CV. So at last, the region provides also an ample information for taxonomic classification of microbial communities from specimens associated with the microbial studies. And this carrageen is produced for the bacteria for the disease being the carrageen, but also the gene expression analysis we will see. So this is the left one where you can see this is a healthy sample of the seaweed, Capafacus. And you can see the right side, you can see some white color uh, formation in thallus, uh, it, which looks like an uh, uh, ice. So the ice ice is nothing but the name comes from the Malay, Malaysian people, they have given a came. Uh, so this, uh, so it looks like an ice form, uh, it, like, like, it will be like, look like a crystal if you see it in this tray. So that's why like ice crystals. So this is named is uh, uh, from that, it comes from that. So this name is ice, 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 ice. So what you say in the left side is the healthy one, and right side is you see the diseased one. And we sectioned it, uh, and uh, we have went for the staining study, gram staining. We got uh, uh, gram negative bacteria, gram positive bacteria, which are involved in uh, uh, formation of ICS disease. So these are some histological pathological studies uh, where this disease, the bacteria, uh, which uh, leads to the for reason for the formation of ICS, it may discredit the sulfate and polysaccharides, and also it's uh, uh, degrades the uh, cell wall or all the polysaccharides in this uh, cell wall. So you can see in the first two figures here, you can see sulfate of polysaccharides are healthy, but in the disease one, you can see some uh, 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 disintegrated polysaccharides, degraded polysaccharides. And right side, you can see some uh, bacterial uh, presence in the strain. You can see some here, over here, over here, and here. So some endophytic bacteria are also present in the section. So this variation in the concentration of sulfate polysaccharides, you can see in these two pictures. And the histopathological uh, sections of uh, showing bacteria. So this shows, this histopathological studies prove that this some bacteria are uh, present in the uh, uh, thallus, which is responsible for the ISIS disease formation. There are a group of communities of bacteria. So in order to reveal this, what are the bacteria are majorly involved and what are the bacteria are all together involved, uh, we have to go for a metagenomic study. So this was the uh, preliminary uh, study we have done uh, uh, three basic uh, basic studies. So this is a plate-based uh, as activity as we have done for carrageenous activity in bacterial strain. So screening of this carrageenic bacteria, we have uh, uh, done the one particular bacteria in a, uh, in a plate, uh, Zobel uh, uh, ZB carrageenic agar plates, where you can see the bacteria which has uh, grown uh, in the middle and it's uh, producing some enzyme which shows a clear uh, zone, zone of clearance you can see. Some, uh, it shows that this this media also has some, uh, we have added carrageenan. So this shows that uh, this bacteria uh, uh, involves in the degrading of uh, uh, carrageenan. So this for the result which appears is like in a zone formation. So this is the zone of clearance, uh, carrageenan degrading bacteria which produces carrageenase enzyme, which uh, eats the carrageenan in the media. So next to use spectral analysis, we have shown that uh, this is a, First of all, the standard carrageenan, uh, which is uh, commercially purchased, and you can see some different peaks. And in the B, uh, you can see um, it's a healthy samples, uh, a healthy sample. I mean, the, which is not infected by the disease, ICD disease. So from that CV, we got also peaks which are similar to the rough healthy, uh, but in the diseased one, uh, you can't see any peaks. So this shows that carrageenan has been degraded. <coughs> Next to the, it's a FTIR. FDA study can see the commercially available carrageenan peaks here. Uh, with the healthy samples, uh, we got also uh, obviously peaks which are similar to that of commercial carrageenan. But in the infected uh, samples, you can see the extra peaks there and some peaks that we don't see also here. So it means that the carrageenan has been degraded, particularly in the infected samples. So these are basic studies that are done with FDA or spectroscopy. Then it's NMR analysis. The NMR analysis uh, we have done with the Standard carriage in the left side, you can see some peaks in 4.7 and 3.5 and 1. But whereas in the healthy seaweeds, uh, uh, we can see the same uh, lot of peaks we can see, but we pretty along with the carriage and other uh, sulfate and polysaccharides and other uh, uh, compounds, carbonated compounds also there. But in the infected seaweeds, all these carbonated uh, carriage molecules are all degraded. You can see only a single peak where there's no presence of any carriage molecules uh, and related compounds or derivatives or compounds also. So in HPLC analysis, as a uh, first uh, first graph, you can see the standard carrageenan sample, uh, where you can see some peaks like in the uh, uh, 1.19, 0.87, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 peaks you can see. Whereas in the healthy seaweeds, 
uh, we can see lot of uh, things uh, results are, but here it say place in one two three in the same area we can see some so this shows the presence of crash in the hdp but as far as the infected seeds we don't see uh, much peaks and we have some peaks here but which is not uh, sharp peaks here and also some uh, uh, breakdown of these carrageen molecules with the different derivatives also molecules so in this infected seeds are also this carrageen molecules are also be degraded and has been uh, has been breakdown into different subunit molecules so you can see the uh, difference in this peaks of this area and in this area so this is a comparison between the healthy and infected and the standard one so this is a mass spectral analysis gcms analysis especially 36 anhydro d galactosone which is a major uh, uh, compound of this carrageenan molecule which is a derivative from the peak of retention time of 26 area so this is a general ms and here you can see the table so where you can see the infected sample and samples we have lot of 3 anhydro d galactosones uh, molecules and other different types of uh, real galactoses here in 27.6 Uh, but here in the uh, standards in the, in the standard sample and uh, in the healthy samples you can see but in the infected samples where we have a ld galactose and the 2 3 anhydride galactosomes are present but here in the standard samples we can you can see the presence of these two samples also so this shows that some infected in infected samples you can't see any compounds like a 2 3 anhydride galactosome in the you can't see so this is a uh substantial study shows that uh, so here in the next study this is a microbiome study where we have done a sequence similarity curves what to use uh with this it is denoted as a sample one is whole infected samples at the uh, sample infected cv tips and infected cv thallus so uh, our aim is to study the microbiome which is present in the infected uh, cv samples where uh, whole infected cv we have taken and in the tips and the whole thallus we have taken so the sample 1 and sample 2 and sample 3 shows the 97% of sequence similarity in all the three so uniformly in all the area uh, this microbiome bacteria has been spread and you can see the relative abundance at the order level so in this where we assume sample 2 the bacillus which is unclassified bacteria we have a enormous amount whereas in the sample 3 also with the oceanus spirulens bacteria with enormous amount and by sample 3 ultramonodus which is in the lesser amount and in sample 1 Uh, same thing we have ultramolos and ocean spirals and pseudomonidians where you can see pseudomonidians in the larger amount so we found that in sample 1 i mean the whole infected cv sample the presence of the pseudomonidians this bacteria presence is higher so we carrageenated uh, we talk we thought that this bacteria might be responsible for a degree of carrageenan so in further studies we found that uh, in uh, some uh, studies we have found that this Uh, pseudo ultramonas carrageenan ora this bacteria which comes from the pseudomonidians this plays a major role in uh, degradation of carrageenan in coprophagous salvage so say uh, this is uh, 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 this is another uh, diagrammatic representation of uh, metagenomics analysis of our v3v4 region in order level so in order you can say pseudomonidians reach in sample 1 on order 2 the bacillus uh, reach in the sample 2 on order the uh, third order the third level in the oceanus spirals uh, reach in sample 3 so we can see the uh, richness amount of uh, pseudomonidians bacteria in this sample 1 so these are the uh, you can see the pseudo ultramonas carrageenan or sample which i said uh, this sample which is in a higher amount in the uh, sample 2 also so this shows that uh, this bacteria plays a major role in a uh, Uh, species is carrageenan plays a major role in degradation of uh, carrageenan in capafagus alveolarisi so this is uh, another pie chart which pie chart like uh, it's a microbiome study of bacterial uh, uh, microbiome study in genus level uh, so we have seen in the uh, order level is this is genus level so where you can see the cyclobacterium sample 1 and bacillus in sample 2 or tuberculosis sample 3 So these are the sample one and sample two, three. What are the samples we already we have mentioned? So these are the samples we have taken, and the bacteria, the abundance of the bacteria you can see here. So in that, uh, uh, here you can see we have a better hypercolysis and in the cyclobacter species, and here the uh, pseudo uh, acrobacteria, gamma bacteria, and the pseudo ultra ultra monas mineral bacteria here, and you can see these uh, bacteria. Which are basically it's just a large amount of bacteria, basically up to 82 percentage. So these are the uh, pie charts which are showing the bacteria 
which is responsible and which is uh, present in the higher amount on percentage uh, representation of genus uh, uh, level. So next we go into the uh, into topic uh, transcriptome studies. So graphical representation of transcriptome analysis surprises this is kappa figures alveolarizy. So this kappa figures alveolarizy ISIS disease sample. You can see the phalli which is in a white color. So from this we extracted RNA extraction was done. So this RNA extraction we faced a uh, very uh, tough, uh, tough, tough situation we faced when uh, extracting RNA because uh, D, we we know that DNA is very stable one, but RNA is not a stable one. And uh, this sample analysis we have to send outside. Even we don't have any facilities for a. It's a huge amount of sequencing we should to buy. So we uh, given a sequencing analysis outside. So it has to travel. Uh, Microbial study what is done in the US. In a lab, we uh, where we send the samples from here, uh, from India to uh, uh, US, and for transcriptome analysis, we have uh, given the samples uh, in Eurofins in Bangalore, where they were they also faced uh, many problems in RNA extraction and uh, RNA samples which we sent from here. Uh, they hardly uh, uh, faced they they are they it's not easy for us to, for them to take the RNA and sequence process it for the for the studies. So we were facing many hurdles in uh, RNA extraction and making the RNA. So finally, we uh, got uh, some good results on kit uh, where uh, uh, my mentor supported me to buy some kits from the US and also uh, isolation of this RNA extraction and DNA extraction. Uh, it was uh, helpful in that kit. So after uh, extracting uh, RNA, uh, we have sent the analysis for the transcript of studies. So in under transcriptome studies, uh, we can uh, see functional analysis of particular genes which are involved in biological process, cellular process, or molecular process. And we have a classification study, gene classification like KE, G coto, uh, genotopic uh, expression studies, and KOG functional classification studies, which the, these classification graphs will show how these process, biological process, chemical process, and the cellular process are being affected in ISIS disease uh, capophagus alveolarizy. Uh, this transcriptome analysis can be done for any uh, gene expression analysis studies where you can come to know uh, what all the genes are being downregulated and upregulated uh, compared to the normal one or diseased one. So this platform is highly helpful in expressing any disease. Uh, you can you can go for any human disease and animal disease wherever this transcriptome analysis will reveal you the uh, genes which are involved or which are uh, being uh, affected uh, are responsible for the uh, disease formation. So what are the protocols? So first, uh, total RNA has, be, has to be isolated, and the quality of the RNA has to be checked uh, by an nanotrope. And uh, after uh, RNA quantification and qualification, I mean it has to pass the QZ. Then after that, they do for the mRNA enrichment. I mean, enrichment of uh, a higher amount of mRNA they need. So because to synthesize the cDNA, complementary cDNA synthesis to be done from the mRNA. So we need a large amount of mRNA. So mRNA enrichment will be done. So after mRNA enrichment, uh, we go for the double standard cDNA synthesis, complementary DNA synthesis. And after that, uh, all the cDNA which is synthesized, uh, we will not have a, a proper uh, uh, sequence uh, uh, at the end. So the, some mechanism has to be done, uh, like uh, adding an adapter, uh, adding a poly A tile at the end of the three prime, and we need uh, ends just to be repaired. So this only, uh, it's like a, it's it, it, obviously it like seems to be like a uh, gene walking or something like that, uh, primer walking, sorry, primer walking. So uh, continuously the sequences at the end has to be good so that's why from that end we can again uh, sequence the second uh, second strand. So a lot of primers are also involved in this. Uh, so I, I'm not going to give the primer list here. You can see my papers which is available in the uh, in the Google websites. Uh, so all these uh, primers, what are the primers which are involved in uh, sequencing? So all this has to be done uh, from the end of the sequences, which are sequenced of, uh, from one side to the other side. So next to the fragment selection and PCR. So the fragments has to be selected and uh, uh, the primers has to be designed and these primers has to be put, uh, uh, these fragments which the last fragments are used for the uh, PCR, that has to be taken and these primers has to be added to that fragments and PCR has to be performed subsequently. 
and finally when you get all the sequences we have to prepare a library so a library quality assessment how the library has been uh, prepared whether it has a quality quality so with that prior library pressure only we can go for preliminary sequences so this is a process which i was explaining uh, like you can see in mrna where we have a polyethylene uh, we have after fragmentation we have a uh, various fragments of this mrna so after we go for reverse transcription process it's really but uh, we are adding a reverse transcriptase enzyme which will helpful in a uh, adding a synthesis of cdna complementary dna it's so even we adding a nucleotides uh, like all the deoxynucleotides the time in adenine guanine and etc so, so after that we have uh, uh, there'll be a synthesis of strand so there'll be a strand synthesis here so after that the three prime at the position of the three prime uh, here and here uh, will be added a poly a Uh, tile. So in here, these two portions, yeah, for eight twenty-nine uh, will be added. And from here, this portion, uh, using uh, other enzymes or adapter ligations will be added. And uh, this, with this planking region, these regions, uh, further uh, se to sequence the fragment, this uh, strand will be extended. And from here, this PCR, uh, PCR can be done. And certainly, lot of amplifications can be done. And uh, cDNA uh, library can be prepared, and with this cDNA, this is cDNA library, and in this library you can go for the sequencing. So methodology after sequencing it, under the metagenomic study and uh, transcriptome studies we have done uh, raw data. Uh, all this after this process we have this all this raw data, so which is the uh, supplementary data for us, uh, which we will get from the after sequencing. So we have to check the quality control. uh then uh, sorry this is a transcriptome study or metagenomic study i have mentioned it wrongly sorry so after a, a transcript assembly uh, after this transcript assembly uh, assembly of transcripts mr transcript we go for ssr analysis and assembly signal to polymorphism analysis integration analysis <clears throat> after this we go for gene function annotation what are the genes which are functional or non functional which are down regulated which are up regulated cds prediction codon sequencing Predictions, which are, I will show you uh, all the results for this gene. What we have done, and reference alignment will have to be done. Uh, gene expression analysis, RNA seq, and advanced quality control. This all need to be done for this uh, gene expression analysis. Gene after genes are has been, uh, what all the genes has been expressed, what all the genes has been a uh, uh, not expressed. All this analysis has to be done from this uh, data, RNA seq analysis data. Next, the differential expression analysis. Uh, which shows the uh, upper regulation down regulation or uh, the normal to the higher level of expression analysis genes will be analyzed uh, with this the geo uh, ontology uh, uh, ontology enrichment analysis and kg enrichment analysis all will be done so this is the complete uh, transcriptomic studies of particular gene which can be for any genes uh, this is a protocol and method which has to be done So here is the result for our uh, ICD disease compartment cell disease, where we have a number of genes which sequence like 50 more than 50,000 genes, and this part is till this part it's a biological process, and uh, from here to here it's a cellular process. For uh, it means the genes which are involved are functional for biological, for cellular, and for molecular for molecular uh, studies. For example, here you can see uh, developmental process where you can see uh, no. Uh, Growth or no, no no expression at all, and here you can see detoxification. There is no growth or there is no uh, process at all. It shows this this biological process or have been a uh, biological process which are down regulated or the genes which are been down regulated because of this uh, ASS disease. Uh, what are the uh, genes which are involved in uh, are affected or down regulated because of this ASS disease? In which are involved only for the biological process. in this we can see for example signaling rhythmic process and you can see reproduction there is no uh, growth or re reproduction here and uh, positive re uh, regulation of biological process and uh, here you can see multi organism process because of many bacteria are involved here so many uh, organisms are have been uh, involved in process so you can see some uh, uh, genes have been expressing here so like this is uh, a locomotion metabolic process metabolic process seems to be higher because of this many organisms are also involved so this metabolic process may gene some genes which are apart from uh, uh, caprophagus some metabolic process of bacterial genes are also involved then the immune system process you can see there is no 
expression of genes in the immune system at all and even the growth there is no any uh, uh, there is no expression of a gene for the growth at all so this shows that the biological process is been totally affected by the capophagus uh, for the capophagus alteracy after the disease has been attacked from here to here we can see the cellular components uh, extracellular matrix component example this uh, uh, this is the best example the extracellular matrix the thallus the whole thallus the rigidness the softness is totally has been damaged by the bacteria of, of this for this one for this algae so this uh, shows that the genes which are involved in the cellular component of this extracellular matrix and extracellular matrix components so all genes are i mean you can see there is no growth in the extracellular region at all extracellular there is no expression of the genes extracellular matrix extracellular matrix component extracellular region and extracellular region part so the extracellular part of this capophagus algae is all been totally all the genes are have been uh, affected by this icc species and you can see some uh, uh, genes are expressed which is responsible for the virus especially so apart from this bacteria so there are some virus also involved in, uh, in the icc disease formation but our study of focus is only on the bacteria because the majority of the organisms involved in icc disease formation is bacteria compared to the virus so further in the future uh, some scientists or some people we are involved in studying the viruses which are involved in the uh, icc disease formation also that can be a breakthrough study uh, so other organisms are also involved some of them other virion parts and virion you can see some genes that has been expressed that are responsible for the virus and at the last third uh, you can see some molecular functions where metal chapter activity catalytic activity uh, transport activity so these are all structure molecular activity some genes that has been expressed and uh, uh, some genes that has been down regulated so this shows that its molecular functionals also been uh, upregulated down with this some uh, uh, you can see some bindings it's nothing but some uh, growth uh, gene expressions of uh, in binding seems to be higher it seems that binding of uh, compounds like other bacterial compounds uh, rises disease the tally which may attract the bacteria to bind to the capophagus alveolarizing so which is in the ocean so the binding uh, expression uh, genes which are involved in the Uh, binding process, uh, we can see some uh, expression seems to be higher. So these are the gene function classification which is done for the icc disease on biological aspect, on cellular aspect, and molecular aspect. So these are other genes like uh, which are into the metabolism level. So what are the uh, genes that are involved? We have seen uh, last uh, in our slides, in la last uh, classification slides, and uh, now in KGG classification. Uh, this study will show you the uh, metabolism level the bio uh, biochemical pathways or metabolism pathways which are involved are affected appropriate or down regulated which are uh, which is higher which is lower uh, for this disease uh, so nicotinoid metabolism you can see uh, cyclic nitrate genes are has been uh, expressed and here you can see carbohydrate metabolism uh, so obviously this uh, our carrageenan seems to be some polysaccharide carbohydrate so metabolism of this carbohydrate uh, Uh, has been uh, involved higher. This process seems to be involved in higher. So carbon metabolism. Then translation. This is transcription and translation. And uh, mRNA to cDNA. Uh, so that genes are also this uh, pathway is also involved in higher level. So this shows that there are so many bacteria that have been involved in a uh, uh, production of uh, uh, some compounds and needed in the carrageenan bacteria. Some enzymes which are involved in production of uh carrageenan enzyme which will be responsible for degrading the carrageenan uh, carrageenan from in the thallus so membrane transport transport and catabolism it's all there replication repair is also solved and uh, protein folding and sorting and degradation seems to be also lower so these are also the best example for the uh, uh, glycan biosynthesis uh, here is a best example like uh, only the 48 types of a uh, uh, very less level So glycan, as I showed you, the biosynthesis of glycan is nothing but the carrageenan compound. The biosynthesis and metabolism seems to be very less in this. Uh, but this also shows that some uh, bacteria are involved in production of carrageenan enzyme. That enzyme is responsible for degrading the uh, carrageenan compound in the algae. So here we have we have another classification, KOG functional calcification classifications. Uh, in this classification, number of genes and uh, structures. Apart from the gene classification and percentage of genes, how many genes are involved? We have seen in the last uh, in the last graph. And here, uh, 
the further functional uh, output uh, what are the uh, for, for for example we have seen in the first uh, two slides before which is the process to involved in biological transcription translation uh, replication cell motility and virus info information then uh, unnamed uh, proteins some proteins also the structure cytoskeleton so in all this how much percentage of function is involved we have seen the genes which are involved now with this classification we will show you uh, what are the uh, functions which are happen uh, from the gene from the gene or protein which are expressed okay so rna processing and modification in ea you can see just in d you can see some cell cycle control cell division chromosome partition in d you can see there is very very less the percentage of it seems to be very less and uh, here uh in j as i told in the last uh, presentation i mean last slide translation in translation we have lost of mrna and ribosome structures and all so you can see in j we have higher level of percentage of it all in j so this is nothing but the translation ribosome structure and biogenesis and in k transcription the first mrna level it seems to be very less and defense mechanism you can see how better this uh, capafagus is involved in defensing the bacteria i mean the controlling the bacteria uh or to uh escape from the bacterial infection uh, where you can see we the defense mechanism is very very less for the capafagus uh, there is a so this shows that the bacteria which is uh, infects the carage infects the algae uh, dominates it they dominates the defense mechanism the simply to say the immunological part of the capafagus is been gone down and uh, full infection has been involved and the capafagus dragon has been totally degraded and the disease is successfully uh, uh, transmitted to all the thallus and it's damaged all the carrageenan and the algae is is totally infected by the disease and carrageenan has been degraded obviously there is a loss of carrageenan so this is a study functional classification study of for uh, particular genes that involved and uh, one of the person of genes is this this kog function classification we tell you the uh, results of uh, higher the end result of the genes are functional so there are some softwares are also involved in a transcript assembly uh, like here we use a inchworm chrysalisis and butterfly so these are the three uh, different types of softwares softwares which are used for a uh, transcript assembly for example in inchworm uh, as we as i said this mrna has been a uh, uh, fragmented and reset you can see the extended chymase space a break guys so this liquid will be added at the end and there will be sequence linear sequence will be there and uh, this chiralysis this uh, software will used to build up uh, uh, the uh, overlapping sequences overlapping sequence as i told because all these slides before i explained you uh these are all developed with these softwares only so this kind of chrysalis softwares will help you with overlapping the linear sequence this the linear sequences which you got from this inchworm software uh second uh, process subsequent process with this software we can go for a uh, uh, overlapping linear sequences and third software which is used is butterfly and here we have a statistical analysis with a graph uh, we call as a deep bridge graph analysis and in this uh, with this uh, statistical graphical analysis we can uh, uh, sort the uh, genes and pathways which i told you kog classification zoontology classification so all these pathways how much uh, each and every gene involves in each and different pathways so in collection of these data as a classification will be given in the excel results so using these three softwares you can uh, assemble this uh, transcript uh, uh, raw data so these are three softwares which we used for this study so at last finally uh, this is a paper which we published in aquaculture which is the impact factor of 4 uh, and it has been published uh, uh, in the aquaculture journal impact factor 4.4 transcript of process and isis disease gradual capafagus alvesi and another journal uh, uh, food by stem this also high impact factor with so uh, in fact uh, where this paper will deal with the microbial metagenomic studies and other uh, uh, parts which are called uvs pack ftr nmr uh, studies gcms uh, studies all these studies uh, uh, will be uh, uh, dealt with this in this paper and another uh, study with, which i didn't focus here in the presentation uh, this uh, paper will tell you 
the exact uh, bacteria, I mean, the Surama alpha mass carazinivora, this bacteria is like in silico study, docking studies we have done against this carazinin and uh, compound and carazin degrading bacteria carazinase. And we got a good result, uh, uh, docking study results, uh, and we have published in this uh, journal. And uh, this initial study where we have collected samples and uh, the initial uh, histopathological studies and the uh, uh, gram staining studies. We all done and uh, this been published in, it's also a, a very good web of science index journal, uh, Indian Journal of uh, Geomarine Sciences. So these are the four publications which have successfully we have brought out from this uh, 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 studies, from the study family and from my uh, uh, postdoctoral fellow. So, so thank you. Uh, I thank one and all for all the faculty and scientist members, especially Dr. Rester, Dr. Sheila Rani Ma'am, and uh, my mentor, postdoc mentor, Dr. D. Inbagandan sir, and other faculties which are all helped, uh, involved and helped me a lot in finishing this postdoc work. And especially my mentor for giving me a nice opportunity and platform to present my work uh, before you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Sir. If there is any doubts, let me know. Thank you, Dr. Rester. It is a wonderful presentation. And now I request the participant to post your queries in the chat box or you can use the raise hand option. Uh, uh, Soumya will unmute yourself. Any queries from the participant side can be posted in the chat box or kindly click the raise hand feature. I'll unmute you so that you can directly interact with the speaker. Actually, Rias, I have a question. I just want to, uh, 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 even uh, this answer will give some clues to the people who want to work on this particular omics aspect. So apart from this RNA, now uh, we have the problem in RNA extraction. Apart from yes, that, what are the other problems you faced during this uh, particular omics approach and how you troubleshooted? Yes, sir. Uh, basically, first, uh, we can't uh, uh, control the, I mean, we can't bring the disease in, in, vit in vitro in lab. Uh, so we have to collect the samples. Uh, and as I said, RNA extraction, it's uh, very difficult in any process. I mean, in a plant or animal, wherever. Uh, you know, from the field, if you're collecting them before, while well, you trans trans uh, transport it to the lab, it will degrade. So what we planned, uh, RNA extraction has to be made. So we uh, bought uh, RNA latter solution. So this RNA latter solution has been, uh, should be taken in ice. Uh, I mean, uh, ice balls or in a, uh, we had to take it well, you are uh, collecting sample and uh, we have to just to be sterilized everything because while during sample collection, uh, your bacteria is involved you know, in the uh, well-being collection like in your hand or uh, you can contaminate yourself also. So even that bacteria can also uh, come into your uh, microbiome analysis or transcriptome analysis. So to avoid that, we should be like sterile. So uh, main difficulty, like maintaining a sterile condition in the lab is fine. You can do it, but maintaining the sterile condition in the uh, environment is very difficult. So we took the samples uh, in the from the sea. Uh, as soon as we took, we washed it with the sterile water, a sterile sea water, which we took, we took it from the lab, and we transferred immediately the uh, they collected the ISDC sample in the RNA letter solution, and uh, we transported it. In, during uh, during transportation, it's very difficult. So we transported the dry ice. And the processing, as I said, the RNA extraction is also difficult. In, apart from the DNA metagenomic study, in the lab, we isolated the DNA and this DNA has to be sent to the abroad. Uh, so we isolated the DNA and uh, the DNA sample has to be transported. We have a lot of queries and we have uh, there are documentations we have to do uh, for sending the samples. You know, whether, you know how difficult to send the sample from here to the abroad. Uh, uh, for analysis. Uh, so we faced many problem in RNA extraction and uh, DNA sequence, like doing this, all this LGS works, genome sequencing, especially maintaining the uh, impact of bacteria in the uh, sample, it's a uh, highly difficult one. So these are the major and minor problems we faced and, and troubleshooting 
in omics studies uh, we have to be careful and we have to be uh, cautious in doing omics studies thank you sir so there is a question from ms lata ratnam library quality assessment regarding the what quality. is library quality assessment this is her question sir yeah that's what it's like uh, during sequencing uh, what we will do cd in a library construction as i said uh, there are some sequences will have, so you, you know that uh, in pcr normal pcr itself uh, you will get some lot of errors while you are doing a, a pcr we will have a, a, a mis amplification also it's the same way in during live construction of library as i showed you as, as i showed you in a, a graph how do we construct the cd in a library at the end of the part we might get a, for a, everyone knows that if if you are doing a sequencing in regular part uh, if you know that the majorly uh, by doing pcr sequencing normal sanger sequencing 7 till 700 to 800 base pairs only you will get uh, peaks when you do when you see the chromatogram when you see a chromatogram beyond that uh, like 900 or 1000 1500 if you do normal sequencing standard sequencing id of c sequencing whatever you will not get a right peak so till this 700 base pairs you have to be very cautious that your mrna is been synthesized very carefully at the end at the end for example if you check for example 750th nucleotide uh, or base pair where you have a sequence like a t g c so on so of 10 nucleotides from that nucleotide sequence only we have to synthesize the next primer and we have to uh, sequence the next part next 770 base pairs or 770 mrna whatever the protein gene is which we will transcribe or translate the part so there will be some errors so that quality has to be checked and assessed at the end then only you will get the uh, the uh, transcriptome the whole gene which is which is highly expressed and uh, which is not uh, uh, which is down which is which gene is down regulated and which is gene is uh, up regulated so particular study which you can assess it only through the quality of this cdna library so the li- quality is means that the sequencing part which you got from the at the end at the end of part so this is what the what do you say cdna library quality assessment thank you sir yeah. so there is one question from mr rajendra narayana sami he wants to know if the eye size disease is found in other seeds also oh no I, actually uh, disease can be found in other seeds uh, but this eye size as i told you this eye size name is for especially for this algae because uh, the thallus is, looks like uh, ice crystals and this name is given by the malayan people this malaysia because in malaysia and uh, in indonesia this country is totally uh, involved and totally uh, the economics is totally uh, fall on this economic this seaweeds only on marine sources only so this this is on 2006 and 7 in sri lanka and malaysia and indonesia uh, there are a huge uh, impact by this disease on this particular algae and this isis name is came from this uh, only for this algae my other seeds are also infected by bacteria but the disease name can be uh, different but to your right to put your question isis disease is only for this cv thank you sir any other questions from participants uh, there are a few compliments from the participants that the lecture was very good and the presentation okay. was wonderful yeah, so, Apart from this, uh, our work, uh, Riaz, is it sir? any other people have reported this kind of uh, oh, carrageen and production will yield will get down in CV in uh, I mean any other region in India or any other country they have reported the same oh, thing? No, no. Actually, the highlight of this research is that actually we have papers before what we have started our work I and mean, before 2017 or 16. People have done only uh, isolation of bacteria. and they have done some gram staining works and as initial works uh, uh, basic works only uh, and they have done uh, we are, apart from this bacteria uh, suppose this is thanks for uh, reminding me like apart from the bacteria and virus also some physical matters uh, like ph humidity uh, these factors are also involved in formation of this uh, isis disease so people have studied that ph and humidity how the temperatures are all involved in uh, like ocean acidification so this might are also uh, involved in the uh, formation of isis disease so people have done research on that and only one paper i have seen in a 
uh, European Journal of, uh, I think in pathology, some, yeah, it's a Springer journal, I think so. That journal, they have done transcriptome analysis for normal kappa fakers, but no one has done for the transcriptome analysis for ISIS disease. Uh, our research and our paper is the first paper and might be future. There are some, some people involved in after looking into our genome and genome size uh, from Brazil, uh, there are people who are, uh, uh, there is a, uh, I forgot it, uh, yeah, its name is Scott, uh, some scientists. They are involved in uh, constructing of uh, uh, Kappa Fagus alveolaris genome. Uh, I mean, only the normal healthy one. Now they have given a request to us uh, to give us our genome also to upload in the, uh, in the genome, uh, in, the, in the NCBI. And they said, uh, it's, this is the first study. Uh, it's involved in the whole world. So they're asking the raw data and genome sequence and the whole genome sequence to upload in the NCBI. And they say only data which is available still now is us. That's great. Uh, congrats again. Congrats. Sorry, sir. I, <laughs> no, no actually, problem. No problem. Just two, three days before I only I got it. Uh, so no I was problem. about to tell you that. Okay. Uh, Dr. Riyas, uh, very happy to hear from you. Thank this you, is sir. Dr. Mahekran Gopal. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Please, please, please. Oh, how are you doing? Hey, yeah, very hi. happy to hear from you. Yeah, it's a good Thank piece of work and you. your presentation very good. Thank you very much for uh, uh, conveying this kind of uh, information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank all you. the very best. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the uh, you. information. So I have some question. I think so you can see some question from Dr. Ratinamman. So huh. you need to say that infection is species specific, sir. Or, uh, I mean, ma'am, you are asking about the species means uh, Kappa Fecus species? No, she is asking about whether the bacterial uh, species, yeah, the, the thing is, uh, the specific bacteria is uh, working on this particular uh, disease. Yes, That's what right. she wants to know that whether it is specifically on the species, but particular bacteria species, species alone creating this. That's what she is asking again. Okay, okay. So I, I showed you the, some pie charts and diagrams in the metagenomic study I showed you. So that chart showed all the bacteria which are involved. So in that majorly, majority, uh, this, this species, pseudo ultramonas caragenovora, this bacteria has been involved in degrading of this caragenic. There are many bacteria species are also involved, but species specific, we can't say. Uh, like uh, we can say, I, I mean that this species is involved in higher level. There are other species are also involved, but especially for degrading this keratogenic, this species is involved. Uh, if it is for uh, in another part, if you take like uh, for Kappaphagus alveolaris, uh, this bacteria can be. But we have another Kappaphagus uh, species also. So I think study has to be done, uh, which is for other Kappaphagus alveolaris or other bacteria. Which is also been known. For us, in our study, we have uh, came to the conclusion this Pseudomonas alveolar is majorly the population is less. The population of the species is less, but its role is involved higher. So that's what uh, I mean, role in degrading the keratin is, is involved higher by this bacteria. So that's what uh, results so are. Adding to the answer uh, by Dr. Reyes, actually, I just want to have more clarity on this particular answer. Actually, when we are doing metagenomic analysis, the output will be OTU units, operational yes. taxonomic unit. Yes, but this particular bacteria, what he, uh, Dr. Riaz is telling, that particular OTU is highly abundant. That's abundant. what uh, we come to a conclusion that this bacteria alone is playing the major role in this ISIS disease. And that's what we uh, again went to the transcriptomic analysis. That's what the answer for you, ma'am. Even in the docking study paper, if you see the genes which are involved for this. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dr. Riaz. Uh, Thank you. It's a really informative and uh, I'm happy to hear this again, even though it's our work. When yes, I'm sir, happy, sir. So happy to see it again and again in a correlative manner. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the nice platform for giving me Thank you. for Thank our you. opportunity. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you.